Hello everyone and welcome to today's lecture which is about sedentary lifestyles. The objectives of today's lecture are, the first is to elucidate the concept of sedentary lifestyle, second is the global perspective of sedentary lifestyle, third is to identify the factors that enhance sedentary lifestyle, fourth is various health implications associated with sedentary lifestyle. And the last objective is how to reduce sedentary lifestyle through regular physical activity regime. Let us begin with the concept of sedentary lifestyle. The word sedentary is coined from the Latin word sedur which means to sit. Hence, sedentary behavior is a phrase that is used to describe actions that involve little energy use. This includes extended periods of sitting at work, home, business centers when using screens for an extended period of time while driving and during free time. A sedentary lifestyle is one that forbids frequent physical activity and is adopted by an individual or community. A person who lives a sedentary lifestyle may be known as a couch potato. Robert Armstrong, a comic book creator, coined this phrase in the early 1970s. In his series of comics, he depicted a gang of couch potatoes featuring sedentary individuals who continuously watch television as a sort of meditation. The term couch potato, which refers to someone who spends a lot of time sitting still and doing nothing, gained a lot of popularity through numerous publications in newspapers, periodicals and broadcasts. Little to no physical activity and a low energy expenditure of fewer than 1.5 METs, which is metabolic equivalent task, which is used to measure the energy expended during activities, define a sedentary lifestyle as a discrete class of behaviors. Running uses up 8 METs of energy. Brisk walking uses up 3 to 4 METs and sedentary behavior uses up less than 1.5 METs of energy. They continued by explaining that while some people are categorized as sedentary due to physical inactivity, others are based on their participation in low energy activities. Numerous methods are used by researchers to quantify sedentary behavior car time, chair or sitting time, indoor time and screen time are all included. Let us now briefly talk about a global perspective of sedentary lifestyle. It is obvious that a regimen of moderate physical activity is essential to a man's health. But despite the widely disseminated risk of physical inactivity, a life segment of the global population continues to be inactive. According to World Heart Federation 2005, between 60% and 85% of people worldwide aren't physically active enough to boost their health, especially girls and women. According to the organization, nearly two-thirds of children are also insufficiently active for their health. In the USA, around 40% of adults are sedentary and about 50% between the ages of 12 and 21 avoid engaging in regular rigorous activities. Inactivity rates range from 43% in Sweden to 87% in Portugal according to a study that looked at the prevalence of sedentary lifestyles in 15 European nations. About 70% of people in Sao Paulo, Brazil are sedentary. According to the WHO's 2007 report, an estimated 2 million people die per year from conditions related to physical inactivity. The financial burdens that society has experienced as a result of physical inactivity has been a major concern of many governments and health organizations. For instance, the annual healthcare cost associated with physical inactivity 
in Australia is around $377 million. Let us now discuss the factors that enhance sedentary lifestyles. First one is technological advancement. Routine manual jobs have been greatly reduced due to advances in mechanization, automation and computerization. Work organizations has been improved because of the use of computers of all types and other devices that encourage sedentary lifestyles by reducing physical activity. Adolescents use computers frequently which is unfavorably associated with the assimilation of health related variables such as life appreciation, health responsibility, social support and exercise behavior. Second is demographic factors which includes age and gender. Sedentary behavior rises from childhood and continues through adolescence. In young children less than 10 years, TV viewing and computer use do not appear to differ between boys and girls. There is some evidence to suggest that during adolescence, boys tend to spend more time than girls watching TV or using a computer, particularly when playing video games. Number three is ethnicity and socioeconomic status. Sedentary behavior has an unfavorable relationship with socioeconomic status such as parental income or educational attainment that is sedentary behavior tends to be higher in low socioeconomic status groups. Television viewing is often more prevalent among non-white ethnic groups such as African Americans. If their parents or siblings also participate in high levels of sedentary behavior, young people are more likely to do the same. Higher usage is also correlated with more computers, televisions and computers in the home as well as a TV in the bedroom. Teenage participation in TV and computer use is connected with parental restrictions on these activities. Coming to number four, which is long working hours. The average worker spends between eight to 10 hours on duty with little to no time for leisure activities or physical activity. This is particularly clear in the underdeveloped and developing nations where employee welfare is compromised. The workers spend a lot of time reading, using computers, managing equipment, attending meetings and driving home while stuck in heavy traffic. These extended durations of sitting promote a sedentary lifestyle. Coming to the fourth objective of today's lecture which is health risks associated with sedentary lifestyle. The first is obesity. World Health Organization identified obesity as a worldwide public health problem affecting over 100 million people. Sedentary lifestyles are characterized by less physical activity which results in the accumulation of extra calories and fats in the body. This is due to the fact that calorie intake from food and calorie expenditure from physical activity and metabolism together determine how much weight may be maintained. Sedentary lifestyles have been cited as a major contributor to obesity in both male and female employees by Lucas, Ward and Brian. Sedentary people absorb and store a lot of calories because of decreased energy expenditure. Obesity is caused by these extra calories. Obesity is a condition marked by excessive body fat to the point where the person's health may be negatively affected. They recognized obesity as a lifestyle influenced by a globalization that had a significant impact on both children's and adults' eating patterns due to low or absent muscular or physical energy expenditure. They described some methods of assessing obesity such as skin fold thickness, body mass index and waist circumference and waist hip ratio. Using measurements of the subscapular and triceps skin folds, skin fold thickness reveals the extent of fat disposition. For this, a caliper known as harpendon caliper is employed. Coming to body mass index, which is determined by dividing a person's height in meters by their body weight in kilograms. 
overweight was classified as having a BMI of 25 to 29.9 and obesity as having a BMI of 30 by the National Task Force on the Prevention and Treatment of Obesity. Utilizing the ratio of hip to waist size, the waist circumference and waist hip ratio approach is used to evaluate fat distribution. Abdominal obesity is defined as having a waist to hip ratio that is greater than 0.85 for women and 0.9 for men. Let us now talk about sedentary lifestyle and obesity in children. The quantity of screen time and childhood and adolescent obesity are strongly correlated. In this digital age, playing video and computer games, watching TV and being overweight in children and teenagers are risk factors. Due to the availability of amenities and a tendency to overeat, obesity has been identified as one of the increasing problems among younger people, especially those who live in metropolitan areas. Children and adolescents who are obese run the risk of developing type 2 diabetes due to insulin resistance. Children who are obese also stand the risk of heart disease and gallbladder stones. Coming to sedentary lifestyle and obesity in adults. In Europe, between 50 and 75 percent of persons between the ages of 35 and 64 are either overweight or obese. Due to the high rates of morbidity and mortality that obesity causes, it is also a significant health issue in developing nations. As of 2012, the prevalence of obesity among adults in Nigeria ranged from 20.3% to 35.1%. Nigeria, the most populous country in Africa, has a high incidence of obesity due to the changing lifestyles brought on by advanced technology and automation. Low physical activity at work is a significant risk factor for obesity. Obesity is a condition associated to a wide range of illnesses including osteoarthritis, cancer, diabetes and hypertension to name a few. It has also a significant morbidity cost, which is the amount of money wasted as a result of lower output, hospitalization, and mortality costs as a result of patients' untimely deaths due to obesity. In 2008, the whole expenditure in America was $147 billion although the cost of morbidity and mortality due to obesity in Nigeria is not documented, its negative impacts are nonetheless readily apparent. Let us now discuss sedentary lifestyle and type 2 diabetes. Physical inactivity is known to be a major factor in diabetes mellitus, particularly type 2, which was formerly known as non-insulin dependent diabetes and is brought on by the body's ineffective use of insulin. Long periods of screen time, sitting, driving, and reading are just a few examples of sedentary behaviors that are highly connected with increased eating and weight gain and favored diabetes mellitus. People who spend more than 40 hours per week on screen, for instance, TV, playing video games, computer, etc., are three times at risk of type 2 diabetes compared to those who spend less. This is a result of the reduced physical activity and unhealthy eating habits associated with screen usage, particularly watching TV. It has been found that if certain risk factors were eliminated, such as being overweight, eating poorly, smoking, and not exercising, type 2 diabetes may be avoided in 9 out of 10 cases. People are not predisposed to diabetes due to a lack of exercise, although prolonged periods of inactivity can increase the risk of type 2 diabetes. 
a survey on average daily sitting time and the presence of any linked chronic diseases such as type 2 diabetes was done in February 2013 among 63,048 middle-aged Australian men for the International Journal of Behavioral Nutrition and Physical Activity. The responses range from 4 to 8 hours of sitting per day. The researchers found that increased sitting time exposed the responders to type 2 diabetes. Women are not excluded either as 90% of type 2 diabetes in women is linked to obesity, a poor diet and physical inactivity, all of which are consequences of sedentary behavior. Children can get type 2 diabetes but it is more frequent in people aged 30 and older. It is impossible to overstate the importance of food and exercise in treating the condition. If the condition is not appropriately managed, it is linked to significant cardiovascular, neurological and renal consequences. High blood pressure, a poor diet, physical inactivity and obesity are some variables that raise the risk of type 2 diabetes. Now, let me talk about sedentary lifestyle and vitamin deficiencies. Sedentary lifestyle is linked to vitamin deficiencies, particularly in vitamin B and D, which can cause osteoarthritis and other diseases. In order to prevent cancer, people are moving away from natural outdoor environments and adopting indoor sedentary lifestyle. This has led to a high incidence of vitamin D deficiency, which in turn causes a variety of bone diseases and organ malfunctions like osteoarthritis, hypertension, heart failure, and other vascular diseases. Our traditional plant-based meals are progressively being substituted nutritionally by sugary and animal fats, which are higher in cholesterol and lower in vitamins, favoring many chronic diseases. The general tendency towards a more sedentary lifestyle makes this worse. Vitamin B group vitamins, particularly B6 and B12, are crucial for leading healthy lives and are caused by vitamin D insufficiency. We will now talk about sedentary lifestyle and hypercholesterolemia. This is a disorder associated with elevated levels of cholesterol or lipids in bloodstream. It is also called hyperlipidemia. One of the three main lipid classes produced by the liver is cholesterol, which is also delivered to the body's cells by low-density lipoproteins and is utilized to make steroid hormones, bile acids and vitamin D. Although the body needs cholesterol, the amount that the liver makes means that it does not need to be consumed in our diets. Hypercholesterol causes 18% of global cerebrovascular disease and 56% of ischemic heart disease. It is important to note that high-density lipoproteins are beneficial for maintaining a healthy heart while low-density lipoproteins are harmful for health concerns. It only has 20% cholesterol compared to 45% cholesterol in low-density lipoprotein, which is bad for the heart. One of the most important factors in lowering the risk of hypercholesterolemia, according to the WHO, is switching from a sedentary lifestyle to one that involves more physical exercise. Maintaining a healthy weight and eating a balanced diet, particularly those rich in plant-based essential fatty acids, are further interventions. Let us now discuss sedentary lifestyle and muscle or skin changes. Sedentary living is characterized by little or no regular physical activity and it is associated with some muscular and skin alterations. Regular exercise is essential for maintaining muscle strength, while idleness lowers muscle capacity and strength. Long periods of sitting change the way the body is positioned. Inactivity speeds up 
the degradation of muscles and people who sit down for more than five hours a day run the danger of losing one percent of their daily muscle power. One starts to lose the muscle fibers necessary for active motions after spending a lot of time sitting still. The brain's ability to send impulses to the muscles more quickly slows down as well. If muscles are not used, the fibers gradually give way to fat and finally muscle atrophy takes place. This leads to frequent fatigue or little exertion. Changes in skin color, fat deposits around the eyelids, eczema, body odor and itching are a few skin issues linked to sedentary lifestyles. These are linked to poor excretory function brought on by inactivity. Let me bring your attention towards sedentary lifestyle and cardiovascular impact. Cardiovascular system is the part of the body that contains the heart, arteries and veins. It is in charge of pumping blood throughout the body, creating a rapid transport system to provide oxygen to the body's cells and also remove wastes, products like carbon dioxide from the body. The heart and blood arteries make up the cardiovascular system. When the body is at rest, the heart muscle circulates blood throughout the body in 20 seconds through the process of contraction and relaxation. Smoking, eating poorly and being sedentary are all harmful lifestyle choices that contribute to cardiovascular disease. A study investigating the association between the weekly time spent engaging in two sedentary activities, driving and watching TV, and the risk of cardiovascular disease, 7,744 men between the ages of 20 and 89 took part in the study. The findings reveal that 82% of respondents admitted to spending more than 10 hours per week driving and 23 hours per week watching television. Greater risk of cardiovascular impairment was seen in 64%. The survey identified cardiovascular disease as the second greatest cause of mortality and physical inactivity as a serious public health issue. Adults watch TV for 170 minutes on average each day, which accounts for 8.6% of daily energy use. Driving takes up 10.9% of daily energy, while the remaining 55 to 73% is used for other sedentary activities like using the computer, playing video games, reading books, or sleeping. These workouts do not increase muscular or strenuous activity, making individuals more prone to cardiovascular diseases like ischemic heart disease, coronary artery disease, and stroke, among others. Physical inactivity is linked to cardiovascular disease and behavioral factors that are associated with cardiovascular disease exist. Metabolic diseases brought on by inactivity expose people to cardiovascular damage further. Physical inactivity, bad eating habits, and obesity linked to sedentary lifestyles are cardiovascular disease health concerns that are now on the rise in developing countries, adding to the burden already felt by these nations due to the consequences of infectious diseases. Let us now talk about sedentary lifestyle and cancer. Sedentary behavior increases the risk of breast and colon cancer. This is so that malignant cells which have high rates of morbidity and mortality cannot form in inactive body tissues, muscles or cells. The WHO states that prolonged sitting raises the risk of colon cancer in both men and women as well as endometrial cancer in women. People who sit for up to seven hours a day have a higher chance of developing endometrial cancer than those who spend less than three hours per day sitting down. Less active women have a higher risk of developing breast cancer than active women do. 
In contrast, men who don't exercise regularly are more likely to develop prostate cancer than their sedentary peers. The cause of this could be linked to the fact that exercise boosts the production of testosterone, a hormone that when generated in excess raises the risk of prostate cancer. Coming to the last objective of today's lecture, which is reducing sedentary lifestyle through regular physical activity regime. If people engage in moderately intense physical activity, especially aerobic exercises, for at least 30 minutes three times per week, they can stop or at least reduce their sedentary lifestyle. Before commencing any aerobic exercise or strengthening training session, a warm-up is necessary. By progressively raising the heart rate and blood flow, rising the muscle temperature and boosting muscle functioning, warm-up exercises get the body ready for exercise. Additionally, it might make sports-related injuries less likely. Exercises like arm swinging, jogging, running, on the spot, neck rotation, stationary cycling, push-ups, press-ups, and hip rotation are full body warm-ups that, if done for 5 to 10 minutes, will increase body's temperature and get the body ready for aerobic exercises. However, sudden exercises without a casual warm-up can result in an abnormal heart rate and blood flow as well as changes to blood pressure which can be dangerous especially for older exercisers. Aerobic exercises considerably increase heart rate and offer advantages different from those of strength training. Blood pressure and body cholesterol levels appear to decrease with aerobic activity. Additionally, it increases cardiovascular fitness and the capacity of the heart and lungs to adequately oxygenate the muscles. To fully experience the benefits of aerobic exercise on the body, system for longevity, improvement in aerobic exercise capacity is related to three crucial variables such as intensity, duration and frequency. Due to individuals' better mechanical efficiency in carrying out the necessary activity, the person is able to establish a stable state of oxygen consumption through aerobic exercise at higher rates of work. As a result, he may complete more tasks while using less energy or oxygen. Simply increasing the frequency of daily activities that involve moderate amounts of effort may be beneficial for sedentary people. Regular jogging, swimming, speed walking, power walking, biking, rebounding, lifting and stretching are examples of aerobic exercises. When taking public transit, a person should get off a few stations or lengths early and then continue walking. Develop the practice of parking some distance from your destination when driving your own car and talking while you walk. When engaging in casual conversations with friends or family, you do not necessarily need to be seated. If one has a desk job, they ought to look for chances to stand up and walk around as much as they can. To avoid dehydration, they should also drink water prior to, during, and after exercise. Short bouts of exercise throughout the day has an addictive benefit. In other words, three to 10 minute bursts of activity can be virtually as good as a single 30 minute exercise. Therefore, you can get significant health benefits without having to exercise for extended periods of time. Light to moderate activity as well as vigorous activity has reportedly been linked to a lower chance of developing coronary heart disease. An active life is a better life. Due to this fact, an active person should allow for up to 60 minutes of exercise each day. This can be accomplished by fitting in a few quick workouts or physical activity sessions throughout the day. Although it is true that vigorous exercise reduces all-cause mortality, the current focus is on increasing moderate activity. Regular exercise, whether for leisure or at work, improves a person's health and well-being in general. 
they provide a number of medical, physiological and psychological advantages that increase a person's quality of life, quantity of life and longevity. According to the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, the advantages of regular physical activity in connection to longevity generally consists of the following. First is it decreases the risk of diabetes, high blood pressure, colon cancer and death from coronary heart disease. Second, it assists those who already have high blood pressure in lowering it. Third, it assists in maintaining strong bones, muscles and joints. Fourth, it assists with weight management, developing lean muscle and reducing body fat. Fifth, it assists in reducing joint discomfort and swelling. Sixth, it improves mood and well-being by reducing the signs and symptoms of anxiety and depression. Seventh, it may enhance the effects of estrogen replacement therapy in decreasing bone loss after menopause. Eighth, it assists older adults in moving around more safely to avoid falls and fracture risk. Ninth, it boosts metabolic and digestion processes. Tenth, it promotes better blood flow. Regular exercise participation reveals the alterations brought on by aging, loss of lean muscle tissue, rise in body fat, and decline in labor capacity. Regular exercise not only reduces the risk of heart disease and stroke, but also gives older people the independence they need to live a full life. Exercises improve outlook and sensation of control, increase strength and endurance, and reduce time spent in wheelchairs. This brings us to the end of the topic. Thanks for watching.